Protect your noggin from taking a flogging, a beating, a bashing. Save your skull from a thrashing. Today, we look at helms from the Middle Ages. Hello again, friends. Lauren here. Pretty easy, messy hair. Don't care. If you want to wear a helm, that's what's going to happen. It's going to mess you up a bit. Now, um, today our focus is on the medieval helm, or if you want to call them helmets, that's fine. I'm not going to get too fussed up about being exact with the period terminology. But we're talking about protecting your head, and probably the first piece of um, protective equipment that anyone serving in an army in the Middle Ages going to look for is a helm. They're going to want to protect the head. That's important because your head is important. Um, it reminds me of the 2000 year old man sketch with uh, Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner. And they talk about the first piece of clothing invented, the hat. Um, it's a quite a good skit. Won't ruin it. You listen to it. But it just focuses on the importance of protecting your head. That's where your brain is, your eyes, your ears, all of your sensory input goes through your brain, you gotta protect your brain. And so the helm is something that we don't see enough of in movies and TV. The stars, well, they gotta show their faces so you know who they are. Well, you could probably do that and still know who they are. <sighs> but that's a rant for another time. One thing helmets are not, though, are horned, okay? Medieval helmets do not have horns. So-called Viking helmets, No horns. A simple protective cap probably looks like this. They even add leather versions. Anything to help keep your head safe. So, we don't want to worry about that. What do we want to worry about is talking about what might be a proper one. So, if we're looking at early medieval ages, this is a high-end helm that you might see. We call it a spectacle or goggle helm because it looks like it's got spectacles. Could also be called cat's eye because it looks like cat eyes. This is a little bit big for me, but it was on offer when I bought it. Nice sale price. But this is a helm made of two pieces riveted down the center. And that's what the reinforcing bands are for, to really make sure that this holds together. So if it does take impact to the head, it's going to help protect you. And then it has the goggles to help start protecting the face. But the, where it sits above the ears, you can still hear. You can see quite well. A little bit of restricted vision and you know we're going back 12 1300 years that might be the top end of homes there might be other versions that just look like a cap of course this is more of a norman style nasal helm sometimes called spangle helm but yeah it's nasal helm it's got a protective bit in front i'm gonna put it on for a second so you can get an idea of what it looks like so there we go Fairly well protected. Yeah, the cheeks are exposed. I'd probably have a male coif, or I'd have a padded arming cap underneath. It's a little funny on my strangely shaped head. There we go. You can hear quite well. You can see most things. You lose a little bit of vision above. A lot of attacks are coming down and cutting, and there you go. Again, it's made from two pieces. It is reinforced. These bands really help rivet and hold it together. You'll see this for hundreds and hundreds of years, helms like this being used in the Middle Ages. And uh, quite popular, again, because made in two pieces, a little bit easier to manufacture, and what would be your first piece of kit? You would probably get something to protect your head. And then you might have a padded jacket as well. Other armor from there, expensive, trickier to get, sure, but start by protecting your head. That's what keeps you from being dead. Now, I don't have anything transitional, no kettle tops, no great helms, no bassinets. But into the 15th century, I do have the barbut, or barbuta, which means beard in Italian. Maybe because you can see the beard, maybe because it looks like it's a big, bushy beard coming over the face. Now, compared to our nasal helm, I have a little bit more restricted vision, but you might hear a difference. I certainly hear a difference. Oh, it's not sitting exactly right, but there we go. Look at this. Oh, you've got 
you're basically encasing your head in metal. And you imagine the bassinet from the late 14th, early 15th century. Whereas this is more of a mid 15th century to later to have that. Well, what all that metal? So it means you don't hear as well. So it's going to offer you more protection around your head and neck and face. But you're not going to be able to hear everything on the battlefield quite as well. And then, of course, my favorite style, the salad, or salet, if you will. Earlier ones were a single piece. And these are forged, by the way, or raised, as they call it in blacksmithing terms. These are single pieces, at least for the helm. And then you've got a slight little crest. Other versions might have a much bigger crest. So it actually has a bit of a point, and you can see here. So it's not perfectly smooth. It actually comes up to a small ridge. And on some helms, that can be a much bigger ridge. And it helps to deflect blows, and they slope down. And that's what a lot of these designs are for. Impact to the head is going to glance off. Yeah, there are some flat top helms, but if you're sitting on top of a horse and people are attacking you from below, they're designed to angle things away, and it's just sitting on top, and you probably have armor underneath that as well. But the really cool thing about this is, if I turn it around, there's a little button. There's a button! And if you push the button, if you push the button with your thumb, it's jammed, hold on. Filming in one take is always tricky. Ah, there we go. The visor goes up. Ta -da! So, if you need, it doesn't really block mu too much of your hearing. Oops. There we go. If I have it strapped around my neck and I can have this up and I've got excellent field of vision, I can hear really well. I probably would have something called a bever, a metal piece that would come up underneath. And the bever would help protect. Uh, there are other mail standards or collars made out of chain mail that would help protect as well. If you're an archer or a lowlier foot soldier, you might just have the salad. And you might have, so if I'm an archer, I might just have a padded jacket or I might have a little bit of armor. But I'm protecting my head because that's most important. And of course, the fight gets close. What can I do? Lock down. Now I've got more protection. Less vision, of course. Earlier bassinets, or hound skull, or pig face, if you will, um, they would cover the whole face. They'd have little holes to allow you to breathe. The holes would be on one side, because if you're taking attacks from the strong of the opponent, they're cutting to your left, so the holes are probably on the right. Also helps if you're jousting or using a lance against someone because of the way you position it. All that is on your left, so there are whole breathing holes on the right. I wish I had one, but uh, I managed to get the barboot and the salad on, on uh, a good sale price recently. And they arrived late last week, so I'm showing them to you today. I have not found a good price on any of the other helmets that I wanted to show you. But the most thing, important thing that I want to talk about is what they all have in common. All the medieval helmets, even though they have different designs, maybe they're made of multiple pieces or a single piece, or this one is a single top and then it's uh, a... <clears throat> the scoop back here is a separate piece, whereas the barboot is just made up of one whole single piece. So you can imagine all the work that goes into making them, but they all have... Oh, hey, look, what are these rivets? There are extra rivets around. What do they do? They hold the liner in. There's a liner inside. And so when you put the helm on, the most important part is that it actually sits on top of your head without sitting on your head. So the liner kind of supports it. It's very much like a modern day construction helmet. They have a liner inside and that allows it to sit on the head, but the plastic of the helmet sits above the head like a little cushioning bubble. And that's exactly what these medieval helms have. So when we say, oh, you know, you know technology and um, we have so much great things today and they, oh, they were backwards back in the Middle Ages. Well, they were pretty smart to have liners in all their helms. And it even goes back to antiquity. And, I mean, helmets, that's the first thing that people have protected. And it goes back thousands and thousands of years of people protecting their heads. But this liner allows the helmet to... 
essentially float a little bit on top of the head. So if I'm wearing this, oops, the straps are getting in the way. Move them out of the way. Put this back on, Let's put it in position. If someone comes at me with a mace, I'm not really gonna feel it because it's gonna hit the metal. If it's really hard, it might jolt my head and I may get injured. But instead of just having padding, which will allow the concussive force to still travel through into your head, um, it's air, it's a gap. So the impact spreads across the metal and it isn't directly driving into my skull. So like I said, keep your skull from a thrashing because that's what they do. And that's why there are these liners, this little suspension system. And then once you have it strapped around your chin, yeah, you might get take an injury. It's gonna stun you for a few seconds or maybe it even knocks you out. But what is the whole point then of wearing a helm? Because you're still alive. <laughs> and that's really it. When we think about arms and armor, and we think about names and movies, we think about, oh, someone just took a sword and went right through the armor, or the ax just goes right through the helmet. Movie magic. Throw away the movie magic, because this is probably just save your life. And if you can make a recovery, even if you've had a concussion, it's a lot better than ending up dead. So wear a helm. Put a helmet on it. Protect your noggin. You don't want a noggin for your noggin. No, no, no. That leads us to a problem that we see in movies. Actors don't wear helmets. Why don't they wear helmets? Well, because you need to see the actor's face. Well, you could have this. You could see the actor's face just fine. There you go. You would recognize Tom Cruise if he was wearing a helmet like this. It'd be fine. But no, we see the heroes not protecting their heads. And why is that? Well, oh, well, the hair, and you got the image and the brand. Well, I don't know about that. But what I do know is that it's important to look after your head. Bike riding, skateboarding, snowboarding, skiing, mountain climbing, all sorts of activities, they say, wear a helmet, right? Well, it's true in the Middle Ages. So when you're talking about movies, TV, video games, uh, role-playing games, Characters really should have head protection. If they're getting into a fight, or they're even exploring caverns and dungeons, they probably should have something on their head. Even something as simple as the nasal helm would be so useful to have as protection. Because... <laughs> I know, a little crazy, but I feel very confident in being able to use the mace to smash into the helmet, yeah, I'm gonna buff out a little, a few little scratches, but I can get a little bit harder and harder and harder and I don't feel it. It actually protects. So, whether it's your multimedia, your entertainment, your games, or you're actually doing sporting things, or you're reenacting and creating your personas in historical context. Ooh, almost trying to get away from me. Remember, this is usually the first piece of armor that someone gets, the helm. So, protect your head, stay safe, and if you like the video, click the like button! Remember to subscribe! Those are all very important things. And thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you have a fantastic day!